a new installation in the 10 minute challenge series. Oh, there's one fish holding right down here. Got another one. <laughs> That's pretty cool, guys. Oh, got him. Took the dry fly. Took the dry fly. What is up guys? Welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. I figured today I would give you guys a new installation in the 10 minute challenge series. I don't think I've recorded one of these since autumn last year. So it's about time. Now it's a beautiful spring day here in Connecticut, early spring. I think we have low 50s right now, but I'll, you know, I'll tell you what, after a long winter, this might as well be summer as far as I'm concerned. Beautiful weather. Uh, I am here today in Litchfield County on a small stream known as Northfield Brook. For those of you who aren't familiar with the 10 minute challenge series, if you're new to the channel, uh, what I'm gonna do is set a timer on my phone and we're going to start counting down to a full 10 minutes. And the challenge here is within that 10 minutes, I need to get at least one fish. I can move around as much as I want. I can change flies, but I've only got 10 minutes from the moment that I make my first cast to when I need to get my first fish in order to succeed at this challenge. So I don't know that there's a whole lot more to say here uh, aside from my strategy. And I think what I'm going to do is start out with a dry dropper rig just because that takes a little more time to rig up. Uh, if the sorts of conditions I encounter maybe would work better for streamers, I'll switch over. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to be moving really quick, hitting as much water as we can, as fast as we can, trying to get one fish before those 10 minutes are up. So let's get to it. All right, guys. So I've got the trusty three weight today. My uh, handy small stream rod. Got an elk hair caddis up top. I've got a uh, stonefly nymph, I believe size 14 or 16 down below. And that's what we're gonna get started with. And here we go, guys. Boom, our timer has begun. Let's see. Starting out at kind of an obvious spot here, like a bridge pool. Can't spend too much time, so basically just make it a couple casts and then we gotta move along. This is excellent water for that dry dropper rig though. No turbulence, nothing that would just drown my dry fly. and some briars there. Oh, I just saw a trout. I think, I think there had to have been a trout that would have swelled up there. Nothing seems to be taking the nymph or the dry though. Boy, if you could get this first fish straight away, that'd be really cool. And maybe we even have a chance to get multiple fish in 10 minutes. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't even gotten one to the net yet, so. Okay, bombed it out there. Way up towards the head of this pool. Almost no current flow up there. Something off the top, right next to my 
right next to my rig within about a oh go oh, just took that elk hair caddis off the top and i missed that hit can i get him to bite again oh can i get him to bite again that would be awesome that was my first my first strike on a dry fly this year i can't believe i missed it i don't want to spend too much time in this spot but it just seems promising Nothing seems interested. We got that one hit up top. And it hasn't been anything. Got one guys, got one. Yes, yes. I just gotta get him to the net. Doesn't count if I can't land him. It's in a rainbow. guys look at that look at that and let's see where we are on the clock this fish took the uh took the nymph we are at four minutes and 30 seconds remaining on the clock we have gotten our first fish uh, i do want to let you guys get a get a nice little look at this fish first you can see he just went for that golden stonefly nymph and First fish in just a little more than five minutes. Not too bad, guys. Not too bad at all. Let's let him go and see if we can't get ourselves one more fish before our time is up. Okay, here we go, guys. Another taker in less than three minutes. Got one. All right. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Let's get you to the net. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Look at that. We got another one, and let's see where we are. One minute, 20 seconds left on the clock. We've gotten two fish. Both of them took that golden stonefly. We're getting released. And let's see if we can get another fish in our last minute. How crazy would that be? Will we bump into one more taker? With just seconds left on the clock. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's my phone digging. <laughs> so, we have uh, hit the end of our 10 minute challenge. <laughs> well, guys, I mean, that's how the 10 minute challenge is supposed to go, right? <laughs> now, to be perfectly clear, I just happened to uh, come upon this bridge pool. Like th this is a brook I've, I've kind of like, I've looked at it in the past. I've scarcely ever fished it. I had never even caught a fish here in the past. Bridge pools just happen to be kind of like one of the default places that you would check early in the season because that tends to be where the stockers, you know, tends to be um, a put-in point for stockers. And um, 
you know, invariably you're going to have a lot of the stockers that are going to spread out. They're going to move downstream. They'll be caught, uh, you know, maybe even right after they come out of the truck if you have people that are chasing the trucks. But invariably you're going to have some number of those fish that are going to hang around in that pool, sometimes for a week or two, even after they're stocked. And most certainly that's what we're getting in this particular case. And that's how fast the action can be early in the season sometimes, guys. So, you know, if anything, the fact that I was able to be really successful in this 10 minute challenge should be proof to you, not that I'm some kind of extraordinary angler by any means, but that if you're looking to just have some fun, get out here and catch a trout, it can be really, really easy if you're, uh, if you're targeting the right water and uh, you just come upon a, a school of these stockers. Anyhow, so two trout to the net in less than 10 minutes. How cool was that, guys? Uh, and I missed a strike in the dry fly. It would have been so awesome to get a fish in the dry fly in early spring. But um, obviously, I'm not going to wrap it up now here. I mean, we got a successful 10-minute challenge under our belt. But um, I'm going to keep on fishing some more of the stream and see what else we can do. See how many fish we can bring to the net. I mean, it's just too beautiful a day not to be out here enjoying some more fishing today. So... Let's get right back to it, guys. I'm going to keep on using this dry dropper rig. It's worked very well for me so far, and uh, I don't see why that would uh, why that would stop. So let's get right back to it. Put it out in the other part of this pool over here. Got one. Oh, did I lose him? Oh, nope. Still got him. Still got him. I thought it went limp for a second there, but he must have just been swimming towards me. This fish took the nymph. Not a dry fly eater. Ah, it's a brown. All right. Nice. Got another species that we hadn't had yet. Pretty damn cool. Pretty little brown. Not, not the sort of size you're gonna write home about, but uh, nice to check another species off the list here. This fish chomped that, uh, that stonefly. All right, guys, we got ourselves a brown. So we've knocked out two species now. The question is, can we round this out with a brookie for the trifecta? That would be pretty damn cool, huh? Oh, and I, you know, I wanted to show you guys one thing real quick. You know, somebody mentioned during one of my videos, I think during my last 10 minute challenge video when I was in the Hockenham, I had set my fly rod down uh, when I caught a fish because, you know, I had to tend to the fish that I had brought to the net. And I got a whole ton of sand in my fly reel. And, you know, I had always known that was bad practice. I mean, it goes without saying that you really shouldn't lie something like a reel in sand. But, you know, it's always kind of been a matter of, well, what else am I supposed to do with my fly rod? And somebody had mentioned, hey, man, you really got to stop doing that uh, in the comments section of one of my videos. And him finally actually saying that made me think, you know, there must, you know, what do people do when they have to do something with their fly rod when they're tending a fish they brought in? And uh, I started looking at products online and I found this really cool um, sort of like rod holster. Uh, I think it's by a company called Opros. And so you can see, you just, um, you just set the rod right into this like holster here. And uh, it does a fantastic job of holding the rod for me. And I haven't had to um, set my rod down in mud or sand or anything since I've been using it. A really, really cool little tool and not super expensive. So definitely something you might want to look into. But um, anyway, enough talking. Let's get back to it here and see if we can get ourselves a trifecta. Okay, guys, I think we're done with this pool. Let's, uh, let's start moving downstream and see if we can find any other suitable areas. And I'm thinking, actually, once we give this pool a rest, I go all the way down, fish as far as I want. Maybe I'll come back here, tie on a streamer, and see if there's any fish that are willing to make a really aggressive take. But we're gonna leave this pool, let it rest for now, and see what we can find downstream. 
Okay, this is a pretty nice looking pool down through here. The only issue I'm seeing with this pool is that the water's running pretty fast through there. The likelihood that the nymph that I was using in that last pool is going to get down there in any reasonable amount of time to catch a fish is very, very low. So this is a great time to switch over to a streamer that's going to uh, sink a little quicker. Uh, so I'm going to put that streamer on before I even uh, get up next to this pool. I don't want to take the chance of spooking any fish. And then what I think I'll do probably is approach from the rear and fish up to the pool. So let's see what we could do. All right, guys, I'm actually going to try this kind of neat pattern called an Orleans Barber. This is kind of a an old pattern that um, was revived to some extent by uh, a YouTube channel I watch called Savage Flies. He's a really cool uh, fly tire. Uh, I'll link uh, to the video in which he ties this fly and you can tie one up yourself. But uh, let's see if an Orleans Barber streamer can uh, get us any fish out of this pool, huh? Ooh, was it snagged? Oh boy, I don't know. That could have been a take, it's hard to say. I landed in the rocks there. I'm trying to get it up as close to the rocks as I can because that's where the, the deepest part of this pool is, is right up against this sort of rocky cliff here. Which, also guys, when you check, look at these giant shelves of ice that are still melting. Almost all the snow is gone, but you still have a lot of these uh, big ice packs on these shaded uh, rock faces that still haven't melted away yet. No, nothing guys. Well, I had high hopes, high hopes for this spot and uh, yielded nothing. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, guys. Well, that was probably an ill-advised stint with a streamer that's really just not suitable for this small stream under these conditions on like a, on like a sunny day like this. Crystal clear water is just just probably not a good time for uh, for a streamer, but I had to give it a try. But we're back to nymphs now. I'm probably going to go back to the dry dropper rig soon enough. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave on the uh, airlock indicator here and the pheasant tail, and we'll see what we can do with that. I'm at a crossing here and there's a lot of uh, fairly calm shallows around here. Look at that. See that trout feeding? There's two trout down there. They're holding and occasionally rising for something at the top. Now I'm going to put on the dry dropper and we're going to see if we can nab a couple of them. Let's do it. I'm going to see if I can get on the other side of the bridge. We'll get down in the stream. We will approach from downstream. That's if I can get down there. I don't know if I can. There's big fences over here. You know what? If I went over there, I could definitely get down to the water. Oh, there's one fish holding right down here. I didn't see him when I glanced over. Well, let's see if these fish saw me or not. Look at that. Move much further downstream, we're going to cast up to them. You probably hear it's getting pretty loud over here because there's a substantial waterfall just to my right over here. It's got to be a good, oh god, 15, 20 feet. Got one, guys, got one. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so damn cool. It's like a rainbow. Ah, 
Come on, buddy. Come on in. All right. Nice. Took the flashback pheasant tail. Let's get him unhooked right quick. Surprised he hasn't kicked an info already. Let's get him back in the water. All right, guys, got ourselves another bow in the dry dropper. Boy, the dry dropper is just performing so damn well today. It really is. I probably should never have taken it off to begin with, honestly. Um, so we have kind of an interesting water coming up here because there could be fish up in the shadows under that bridge, but the bridge looks like it only has like three feet clearance above the river. So that's going to be kind of challenging. And if I do want to get up to where I saw those fish earlier, I'm going to have to go completely under the bridge anyway. So we're going to see what we can do. <laughs> but first things first, let's see if there's any other fish out here. Interested in, uh, interested in this dry dropper rig. The dry dropper rig is just the ultimate delicate presentation. I've got another one. Whoa! Nice! Ooh, that fish is trying to go downstream. Buddy, you're gonna go right over a big ass waterfall if you do that. And again, right in the nose with that pheasant tail. It's amazing how well these barbless hooks can hold. You know, to where you like, you feel like you're tugging them out. But I mean, this is a barbless hook. It's not even a crimped barb, guys. I mean, this is just a straight up barbless hook. They can grip so well. Another pretty little rainbow. Let's get him right back in the water. Okay, this is the first cast I'm really trying to put up under the bridge. Oh, nice, nice, exactly where I wanted to be. Oh, we got one, gotta take it right away. Yeah, all right, guys. All right, got ourselves another brown. Pulled him right out from under the bridge. The very first cast that I was able to lob up under the bridge, he took. He's already spit the uh, pheasant tail here. And this is another one. We're just gonna get him right back in the water. And he's off. <laughs> That's pretty cool, guys. I kept seeing these squirrels way up under the bridge. And I thought, boy, if I can get a cast up there, I bet you one of those fish is gonna take. But I, I really thought they would take the dry. You know, I had that, I had that one fish try to take the dry the very first spot we hit and none of these other fish have even given the dry uh paid the dry any mind uh you know it's all been the nymph so uh anyway let's see if we can get them to take the dry but if they want to take the nymph hell they can have it <laughs> okay we're trying to get up under the bridge again all right we're up under there and another fish took instantly wow wow lots of energy in that fish good lord lots of energy very energetic fish, very dark rainbow, dark colored rainbow trout. Beautiful fish. I'm not gonna move any further under this bridge until I'm fairly sure that there's nothing else under there that wants to hit. And another third cast, third fish. Jesus. Not very large at all. There you go, buddy. Let's get him right back in the water. Well, clearly, this is where a lot of these stalkers are holding, huh? I almost feel bad kind of just beating up on them now because obviously I found where they are and they just, they're way too dumb not to continue hitting the exact same fly coming down and yanking all their buddies away. But I really, really want to get a brookie to round out a trifecta and I figure they must have put at least some brookies in here, right? I mean, you'd think so. You'd think it'd be kind of a blend of all three species. But so far, it's just, it's been nothing but rainbows and browns. Let's keep on, keep on going and see if we can get ourselves a brookie. Got him. Another fish. I am completely under the bridge now. <laughs> Another fish already. Jesus. <laughs> it's not only tricky to cast now, but it's getting tricky to see the dry fly to know if I have a take. Got one. Yeah, okay. It's getting really tricky to see the dry fly to know if I've actually had a take or not because of the way the glare is falling in the water. Okay. And he's off. All right, guys, so here's the story. This is a pretty big cut from what you last saw. 
What you last saw is I was just about to emerge from this bridge to target those fish I had pointed out to you. Uh, before I started going under the bridge and caught all those fish under the bridge. Well, as I started to emerge from the bridge, I found that some people had just arrived here at the bridge and they wanted to cast at those fish that I had been looking at. And the thing is, I caught so many fish under the bridge, I, I felt like I should really just give them an opportunity to uh, see if they could get some of those fish. And I just moved out of the spot and let them have it. And I just went and kind of tootled around some other parts of the stream here. I'll probably end up cutting that footage. It was, it was very marginal water. I was just kind of killing time. In the meantime, it looks like they've changed spots. They've moved. And um, I figured I would come back here and see if we can't target some of those fish. So let's see what we can do, guys. Okay. I'm gonna cast up here. It's tricky. My back cast has to go under the bridge. These fish have all been spooked. I see them kind of scattering. I see a couple fish that are just watching it pass by. They, they have no interest. They're certainly not feeding any longer. They're kind of in a panic mode. All right, guys, I was actually just about to walk up through this really shallow area. And out of the corner of my eye, I looked at this boulder and there's a fish actually holding right in front of it. I'm surprised I even saw it. It's very difficult to make out its shape because the surface is broken. But if I can place this cast just right, I think I have a fair chance of catching him. Oh, that's just the drift I wanted. Let's see if he takes. Oof. My dry did drown. I think it's drowning because the water is just so shallow. It's just so shallow. And unfortunately, this, this uh, nymph does have a little bit of weight. Is he going to take? It doesn't look like it. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to put on a lighter nymph. I'm going to see if that makes a difference here. This water is extremely shallow. I can go with something that's pretty light. And it should still be in the strike zone for certain. Um, I was just using a pheasant tail. So on something that looks a little different than a pheasant tail. Oh, he just smashed something off the top. Wow. God, I really need to tie up some more dry flies. I've been slacking. All right, you know what? I got a little size 20 pheasant tail. That's what I'm going to tie on here. Got one, guys, got one. All right. Yeah. I knew there was gonna be a fish in that run somewhere if I just kept putting it out there. Nice, nice. Oh, and he got off. Oh, damn. I knew that there was fish in this run. Always heartbreaking to lose a fish like that when you work really hard for that one fish and then lose him, you know? All those other fish that came so easy, I actually had to work for that guy. <laughs> but uh, let's see if there's anything else out there. Got another one, guys. Got another one. All right. Oh. Not bad. Had to work for that little guy. Let's get him right back in the water. All right. I'll tell you what, guys. This is such a funny spot to be getting into fish. Multiple fish. Look, it's such a tiny, tiny little riffle. Scarcely eight inches deep. Because the surface of the water is so broken, I really can't see much of anything out there.
Got one. Yes. All right. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's a brookie, guys. This is my trifecta fish right here. I just gotta land him now. Just gotta land him now. Come on. Can't lose my trifecta fish. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Oh. This guy just doesn't land him up. Ah, we got him, guys. All right. Let's see. He's kicked that nymph already. Let me get that out of here. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh, that's so damn cool, guys. That's what I'm talking about. We got ourselves the trifecta with a brookie. Yes, guys, we got the trifecta. <laughs> I cannot believe how many fish I had to catch on the stream before we finally completed the trifecta with a brook trout. <sighs> Gotta love it, guys. Gotta love it. We get our, uh, our final fish in the trifecta lineup right here on this tiny little riffle. Well, I'm gonna stop talking because there's people walking along on a path up here that probably think I'm half crazy just sitting here talking uh, to nobody. Uh, so, got the trifecta, really freaking cool. Let's see if there's any more fish in this run that uh, feel like eating this pheasant tail. Oh, there's a fish rising way up there. Oh, perfect placement. It certainly didn't rise to the dry fly. Let's see if we can get him to rise or maybe at least take our nymph. Oh, right where I wanted it. Come on. Oh, got him. Took the dry fly. Took the dry fly. Yes, we got a dry fly fish too. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. What an aggressive take. What an aggressive take, guys. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's another brookie. Another brookie. What an aggressive take. Come on now, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, all right. Look at that brookie. He hit that elk hair caddis. This brookie is probably twice the size of that last one. Freaking beautiful. Lots of energy in this fish. You gotta love catching beautiful brook trout like this in these tiny little spots. Just so exciting. I'll tell you what, guys. I was holding out until I could complete my trifecta or may maybe get a fish on the dry. And I've not only completed my trifecta, but then followed up by getting a fish on the dry. I mean, if there is any more logical time for the conclusion of this episode, it's now. And what a hell of an episode this has been, guys. We start off with a successful 10 minute challenge, catching two fish in just 10 minutes. We caught, what, I've got, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to even show you all the fish that I actually brought to the net, but had to be 20 plus fish. We nailed the trifecta. We got at least one on the dry in this beautiful little riffle here. What a freaking blast this has been today. God damn, this is fun. <laughs> damn, I love trout fishing. Anyway, it's about high time. I wrap it up here, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up button. If you like what I'm doing out here, subscribe to see more. And I will catch you guys next time. Later.